Good evening, y'all. This is Don, aka the Interactive Nanny. I'm coming to you guys once again, live in the living color from Interactive Nanny's world, where love and play are interacting. So this evening, we're coming to you all with um, two two um, books, two stories. So go grab the littles, sit down, relax, get your cup of tea, a coke milk whatever you water cold cup cold bottle of water let's sit down and get into these stories and then we'll talk about them or whatever afterwards the first book that we will be reading is entitled the girl with the big big questions and it's written by Brittany Wynn Lee and it's illustrated by Jacob Suva the girl with the big big questions let's see what kind of questions she has all right here we go there once was a girl with twinkling eyes and a very curious mind this girl was always asking questions whose answers weren't always easy what kind of questions the world is so very interesting she wanted to learn all she could from what makes a plane stay in the sky to what makes each person good her days were filled with adventures galore, since her mind was so full of wonder. How long can a turtle stay in his shell? That, now that's a good question. How long does light, why does lightning come before thunder? I've never thought about that one either. <laughs> why can't people live on the moon? What happens to stars when they fall? When will you let me stay up all night? Why even have a bedtime at all? I bet all of us asked that when we were little. But once you get grown, bedtime can't come soon enough. What does a dog do while I'm at school? Hey, how was the whole world made? And why do we have big hearts that can feel hurt and upset and afraid? Could I fly if I got a good running start? The nearest volcano is where? Are monsters real? What's Spanish for blue? Is it okay to cut my own hair? She does have a lot of questions, doesn't she? From the moment she opened her eyes for the day to the time she was tucked into bed, she asked and asked and asked and asked every question that popped in her head. At first, her neighbors, teachers, and friends tried to answer her wonder-filled mind, but after a while, their encouraging smiles were replaced by the rolling of eyes. I bet they were. <laughs> She noticed her questions were making them tense, and one day her class hit their limit. After she asked a dozen things about clouds, the class hollered, Please stop! Just quit it! Stop! Embarrassed, the girl tr tried to quiet her thoughts and not raise a voice so curious so that no one would be too uncomfortable or even worse, furious. But one day she found the nest of a bird built low and exposed near to the ground. Why would a nest not be in a tree, she wondered, and then looked around. She was all by herself with no one to ask, so she ran to the library shelves. She read about cities and the lack of safe places for birds to build nests for themselves. Like hunting for treasure, she searched and searched more answers that made her frown. With an urgent report, she announced to her class, there are not enough trees in our town. The class, now moved by this information, asked questions about how to embark on a project to help both birds and their neighbors by planting more trees in their parks. The girl knew then that big questions are good and answers aren't just things to know. They are things to discover alongside each other. Asking questions is how we all grow. And that's the end of the story. All right, that's the first book, The Girl with the Big, Big Questions. So we know what kind of questions she was asking and the answers that she was looking for. And she finally ended up going, researching, and coming up with a solution to a problem that she had found herself and she ended up getting her friends involved and helping her with the solution as well so that was good 
So the next book that we're getting ready to read is entitled, I Really Want the Cake. And it's, the author is Simon Phillips and the illustrator is Lucia Gagiati. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I hope I am. But anyway, we're going to read I Really Want the Cake. Okay, here we go. There's a smell I can't ignore. It's wafting through the kitchen door. It's time for me to find out more. I think it might be cake. It's on the table sitting there. I cannot help but stop and stare. And now I'm really quite aware. I think I want that cake. The decoration's just so neat. That icing looks like such a treat. It smells so chocolatey and sweet. Mmm. I really want the cake. I want it now, and, and though I'm small, I'm sure that I could eat it all. But Mom has it written in a scroll. You must not eat that cake. I'd be a fool to disobey. To eat the cake is not okay. And maybe if I go away, I might forget the cake. I'm really trying to be strong. To eat it would be very wrong. I've wanted it for oh so long. I must forget the cake. The thought has made me rather glum and all I want is one small crumb. My mom says no, but I say yum. You must not eat that cake. I'm going back for cake. It's still there waiting nicely placed for me to have a little taste. To leave it would be such a waste. I'll only lick the cake. Oh my, oh my, what a delight. Somehow the lick became a bite. I can't control my appetite. Just one more slice of cake. I know I've not been very wise. And what I've done I can't disguise. I might have to apologize because I ate the cake. Oh, silly me, what have I done? I'll have to make another one. I guess it could be kind of fun. I've never baked a cake. I need some eggs. I'll start with six. It's sure to be a tasty mix. There's nothing that I can't, I cannot fix. It's easy making cake. That's what you think. I'll whisk and beat and stir and shake until my arms begin to ache. Oh no, that wasn't meant to break. It's hard to make a cake. It is. My gosh, the mess. It's everywhere. It's up the walls and in my hair. When mom sees this, she'll faint, I swear. It's chaos making cake. Y'all, this kitchen looks a mess. Hi, Mom. I've come here to confess. I'm sorry if I've caused you stress. And yes, I've made a lot of mess. But hey, I made you cake. And that's the end of the story. So that I really want the cake. She ate the, a whole chocolate cake all by herself. So those are the two stories that we read tonight, this evening for Interactive Nanny, for Interactive Nanny's World, rather. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. I hope you will enjoy the episode. I hope you listen, like, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends, family, neighbors, schools, daycare, child development centers, nannies, whoever you come in contact with that works with children or are involved in children's lives in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Until next weekend, this is Di, a.k.a. the Interactive Nanny, signing off for Interactive, Interactive Nanny's World, where love and play are interactive. I'll see you guys next week. Talk to you guys next week, brother. Bye-bye.